Hey everybody, Last Outrider here. In this part, we're back to talking about warp travel. Last time I was talking about it, we were talking about warp drives and warp gates. Which is interesting because now I'm going to tell you about warp portals and warp storms. Warp portals have all but disappeared from 40k now, which is why most people just confuse them with warp gates. So I'm just going to read it to you. The term warp portal is often coined to differentiate these warp space, real space interfaces from warp gates. A warp portal is simply an entrance into and exit from warp space. It does not lead to a tunnel, and a spacecraft entering a portal is cast to the chance currents of warp space. With careful maneuvering, it may be possible to re-enter normal space using the same portal from the other side. So, you got to picture this. Right now, they talk about Geller fields and warp drives. They just kind of rip their way through reality. They call it transitioning into warp space. But in 40K First Edition, there were these things called warp portals, which were, as they said, essentially doorways, naturally existing doorways that open from real space to warp space and stayed open so that ships could literally fly in, travel around for a bit, and then fly back out uh, through the same portal. Uh, let's continue then. Da -da 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 -da. With careful maneuvering, it may be possible to re-enter normal space using the same portal from the other side. Again, the exact nature of the portals is not understood. Are they mere accidents or natural occurrences? Or have they some secret purpose? Some aliens use warp portals to travel between warp space to real space, specifically the creatures known as the enslavers. I'll say that again in case you didn't hear it. Some aliens use warp portals to travel from warp space to real space. Which means, on the other side, in the warp, we're going to have a whole section on that coming up soon called Original Chaos and Original Demons. Here, they're simply aliens, which pop in and out of warp portals just like that. And they say... Uh, specifically, the creatures known as enslavers, which live within warp space itself. Like warp gates, portals occur in all sizes and places and may appear on a planet's surface. Some have a definitive physical constitute, while others are invisible or a mere hole in the ground. You got it? Do you see how many easy ways there are now to get into warp and out? Now, think about this for a second, because that's saying that people can travel into the warp. They can literally just walk into it. They're not dead. These are just warp portals. And they could be the size on a human size on a planet, or even just a hole in the ground. It says they don't lead to a tunnel. They just lead straight into warp space, which means the way they're representing this is that in 40K First Edition, you could step through a warp portal and you'll just be on a planet in the warp. It'll be different, it'll be weird, time uh, travels differently there, passes differently or things like that, but it's just going to be like being in real space. Otherwise, what the hell is the point of this, uh, of saying that they, that there could be a hole in the ground might be a warp portal, like a Alice in Wonderland, woo, falling down the rabbit hole. That's literally how it was in first edition. The warp didn't kill you. It was simply another dimension where time traveled past a little bit differently and the physics were different from here. 
It wasn't this maelstrom of living conscious emotion. No dark gods, no anything there. The closest they have now that they mentioned about what might be later become a demon is the enslavers, which I will talk about later. So let's look again. Warp portals do have their use, for there are many recorded instances of spacecraft with damaged warp drives trapped inside warp space and doomed to destruction, suddenly locating a warp portal, enabling them to return to real space. Is that crazy or what? Now, how about warp storms? Warp space is an extremely volatile medium and can represent a dangerous one for spacecraft within it. Occasionally, the normal current movements of warp space become amplified into raging storms of savage and destructive ferocity. Such storms may last for only a few moments, or they may last for years. For a few moments to a few years, yes, a warp storm of a few seconds. At best, a warp storm might throw a ship off course or delay it. At worst, a warp storm can make warp travel impossible in some parts of the galaxy. Storms are constantly forming and dying out. At any given time, at least 10% of the galaxy's solar systems will be inaccessible because of storms. Half of these systems are cut off for less than a year. But many remain isolated for many years, even centuries. Indeed, and pay attention, some systems have always been isolated and show no sign of becoming otherwise. That, if you go back to some of my previous parts, is an indication of what happened to the fantasy battle world when its warp portal or warp gate over one of the poles uh, collapsed and now that world itself is permanently isolated in the warp. That's how it was originally described to us original players of 40k. It's, it, it's there and it's just got permanently isolated by a warp storm. Boom. There you have it. Next we're going to work with, as I said, uh, warp creatures, as they were called then, instead of demons. And I'll see you then. Bye. Hmm.